All right, listen, we are back with Dennis Gardman, editor of the Gardman uh, Letter. And Dennis, you say uh, on the first page in your most recent note, the Obama administration's policy, whether made manifestly public or not, is one of quiet, steady dollar devaluation. And yet we hear all the time from Tim Geithner that they have a strong dollar policy. Are you yeah, saying right. that the government isn't being entirely straight with us? Well, I would hesitate to say that, but uh, I think the government's not being entirely straight with us. Uh, <laughs> I, 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 I think that they enjoy, want, uh, are looking for a continued quiet decline in the U.S. dollar. They really do believe that forcing the dollar down will pick up export trade over some substantive period of time, although history never shows that to, to work its way out, but so, that's what they believe. So we can't have an export-led recovery. Everybody seems to come on and talk about it, whether it's from the administration or I think about that's Laura Tyson. Hope. But you don't think it can happen? Well, I hope that it can happen. I doubt that it's going to happen. That's the problem with the U.S. economy. It's not going to happen because of consumers. They hope they can drive the dollar down to pick up exports. They'll pick up some, but is it going to be enough to get GDP back to three, three and a half, four, four and a half percent that we used to have post recessions? I, I suspect. Let, let not. me actually bring up an email I got from a viewer earlier when I was talking about your note on a different show. Uh, Michael Paneros writes in and says the immediate need to be uh, priced competitively internationally outweighs the downside consequences of a weaker dollar. And he says we're better off with more Americans employed with a weaker dollar than with fewer employed uh, with a stronger dollar. What's wrong about this? I mean, I realize Can't we it, have historically it hasn't worked out, but isn't it different this time? It's never different this time. It's always the same with a few other wrinkles. Um, I, I suspect you'll pick up some export trade. There's not a question about that. China will need more stuff in the future. The rest of India is going, or Asia is going to need more stuff in the future. Canada is going to need more stuff. Europe's going to need more stuff. We're going to be one of the suppliers of some of that stuff. We'll pick up export trade. But can you attribute it to the weak dollar? I think not. Okay, I really don't. History hasn't shown that to be true. I always look back at New Zealand back in the early 1990s when after devaluing its currency for year after year after year on the behest of the IMF because they were not exporting enough, every year when they devalued the currency, they exported less. They finally turned around and said, let's give the reason to take the New, New Zealand dollar higher. And every time they did that, they exported more because you're sending a signal to potential buyers of your goods, better buy it now because it's going to be more expensive later. When you tell them your, your currency is going to go down. I actually had David Malpass just write in and say, look, when Brazil's real got stronger, they had better exports. They had, they better had more exports. Employment, employment. Absolutely. That's what happens. Although in your economic textbooks, you are always taught, because it does seem logical, devalue it, make it cheaper, you'll pick up more sales. You just don't. Historically, that's not what happens. So can we afford to have a stronger dollar policy, truthfully, right now? I think we should. I think we should have, we, uh, Geithner comes out, but so has every Treasury Secretary prior to Mr. Gart Geithner saying it is the policy of the United States to have a strong dollar. What they're really meaning is we hope it doesn't go down much. <laughs> That's really all they're saying. We hope it goes down in a relatively quiet and benign fashion, which indeed is what it's doing. It's going down in a quiet and benign fashion. They don't want to see it going down three and four big figures in a well, day. Well, it's not that quiet. We hit Dow 10,200 and change, right? Uh, That's a little the, noise. Well, it's a little noise. People are trying to tell me that there's a correlation between dollar, the dollar devaluation and, and strong stock prices. And my response to that is, well, if that's true, why is the German stock market making new highs and the euro is getting stronger? So to, to say that there's a correlation between any national currency and its stock market, I, I think that's a specious argument at best. I can't specious. believe we went through a conversation with you and didn't even talk about gold. Isn't Thankfully, that refreshing. <laughs> it's refreshing. It gives How me a chance happened? not to make a lot we'll of talk about gold with you every other time we ever talk I to you. Know, I know. I can't believe it. Fun to have you here, Dennis. Thanks for having me. Have a good trip home. I'm going to try. All right, Dennis Gartman, everyone.